Hi everyone, Brad Drew here. Hey, I want to take you uh, into a little video that I'm going to do right now um, and just show you how much I love Lightroom uh, Mobile for the iPhone and what we can do with masking. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to switch this over here to Lightroom. And I'm, I've got this little photograph here. This is a photograph I did in Rome a couple years ago, just walking down a side street in a you know part of the city. And I really liked what I saw here. It's, it's, it's uh, just a, an old building. You can see the textures and we got these flowers in front. I think those are some kind of rose or something. Um, but I just, I like the scene and I, I, I stumbled across this image the other day um, when I was uh, looking for something else. And I thought, well, let's play with this. So. Um, I've already taken it into Lightroom Mobile and I've done my regular processing. And by regular processing, I mean I've got a workflow that I've already applied to this uh, to set my, you know, my white point, my black point and get my colors right and all of that. If you want to learn more about that, I'm going to put a link in the comments here to this. Um, I've got a video that goes into a lot more detail about my, my whole process with Lightroom. But today what I wanted to do is just take you into the masking feature and show you how much fun it is to work with the, the so many different things you can do there. So let's just back up here. This is the image in the editor in Lightroom Mobile. And what I'm gonna do here is tap on masking. And when I do, it takes us into the masking feature. You know, masking something that, um, you know, it, it, can, it confuses a lot of people and it really doesn't need to. Um, masking, all it, all it means really is that you're going to identify a specific part of the image um, and kind of mark it. And then when you make an adjustment, the adjustment that you make is going to apply only to that part of the image. So it's a way of selectively editing your image. And that's what we're gonna, gonna do with this. Um, so to start off, um, let's just take a look first of all at the different things, different kinds of masks you can create. So if I tap on the plus sign here, you'll notice you can select a subject and that requires that you have a well-defined subject. So sometimes it'll come back and say, I don't, there's no well-defined subject here and it won't recognize anything. Um, you can also select a sky if you have one, of course this image doesn't. You can also choose a brush and you can um, choose a brush and then paint in the area that you want to affect with your adjustment. There is also a linear gradient, which lets you drag down a, 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 gr a graduated um, mask and apply your adjustment just to that area. And then there's a radial gradient that lets you put like a circle on your image and you can um, adjust either inside or outside that circle. Um, but the other things you can do, and this is what we're gonna look at a little bit today, you can choose a color range or a luminance range. So what that means is you can select the blue in an image and adjust just the blue, or select the um, uh, the pink in this, which is what we're gonna do, and, so, and adjust just that. You can also choose a luminance or a brightness range. So you could choose the bright areas of an image and adjust only those. So it, just a lot of different ways that you can manipulate um, and control the color and the light within your image in this tool, and it's really fun. So where I'm gonna start with this, um, Let's, um, let's start here by, I'm gonna jump right into the color range. So um, I'm gonna tap on that. And when I do, notice you've got this little, um, it's a picker actually, that you're gonna choose the color that you wanna work with. If I zoom in a little bit, what I'm gonna try and do here is, is select the pink uh, of that rose. Now, if you notice when I do that, um, when I move that around, you see everything turning pink around. that that pink around there is marking the area that's gonna be in the mask. Well, I want this to be a very targeted mask um, on the roses and the rose color only. So I'm gonna drop that down. If I bring it up, see the whole image is turned sort of, uh, is marked with that, that pink marker. But if I back it off, I can just make it so that it's just going to select the roses. So that's my mask. I'm going to apply that and now, the, the, the roses are what are gonna be affected here, or, or actually all the pink in the image. But in this case, most of that pink is focused on those, uh, on those flowers. So just as by example here, I'm gonna go down, these below here are the adjustments that we can make. If I tap on light, and let's just watch the color of the roses. If I bring the exposure all the way up, look, I've pretty much turned the roses almost white 
um, by, by bringing that uh, uh, adjustment up. If I bring it down, I can make them very, very dark, but it's only affecting the color of the rose. Very cool. So I, let's say I wanna maybe brighten it just a little bit. I can also do all of these other things here, uh, you know, highlights, shadows, etc. cetera. Um, in this case, I'm gonna reset that to zero. So I just double tapped on that button on that slider and I reset it to zero. What I'm gonna do though is go into color right here. So I'll tap on that and the color tool allows you to adjust the temperature and the tint and the saturation here and also the hue. But what we're gonna do is simply adjust the saturation. Watch what happens to our roses. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. And I wanna really focus and emphasize those roses. So I'm gonna bring the saturation up and I'll just bring it all the way up, what the heck, just so we can see this. So there's before and there's after. So we've, we've, we've saturated the pink in the, just the roses. And that's it. The next thing I wanna do, I could exit here. Down below you have a, a check mark or an X. If you click the X, it's not gonna um, commit to that change we just made. Well, I, I wanna to commit to that change. Uh, but if I click the check mark here, it's gonna exit me out of masking and I'm not ready to go yet. I wanna do some more masks. So the next thing I'm gonna do is come up here and tap on this little black box right here. And now I'm gonna choose a different mask. And for this one, I, lo I love those windows and I love the, what's going on in the windows up at the top, but they're very dark. Um, there's some color in the one on the right. What I wanna do is create a mask just for those windows. So I'm going to tap the plus sign and this time I'm just gonna choose the brush. Now the brush, you can come over here and you can change the size of it. You can change the opacity of it and the feathering of it and so on. Here's the opacity down here. Oops. So you can see how you, I'm gonna maybe make it about, oh, I don't know, pretty uh, opaque. And then um, I wanna feather it a little bit and size is probably fine. I'll make it down a little bit. So now I'm just gonna take my finger on the screen and <clears throat> I'm gonna paint in those areas that are the windows. There. Now, when I come down below to my adjustments of light, color effects, and all that, I'm only going to be affecting the window. So let's start with light. And so just to give you an example here, if I come down to shadows, those windows are very much in shadow. If I raise the shadows up, Look how I've opened up those windows. Now we can see the detail back there. That may be what you want to do, or you may want to have it be remain really moody and not so you can't see. But I'm going to bring those up a little bit because I really want to kind of have those windows, um, you know, be able to see kind of into them a little bit. Um, you could also um, drop your whites down because you've got those white, uh, uh, what do they call those things in the, that separate the window panes? They've got a name and I can't remember. Anyway, I'm going to drop the, the whites down a little bit. Um, and you know, you could, you can play with all of these and kind of get it the way you want it. But next I'm going to go to color. And, um, in this particular one, we've got some blue happening up there in that upper window. And I'm going to take my saturation and bring that up. So look, I'm really intensifying that blue, both in the right window and also the blue in those, um, uh, pieces that separate the panes. Um, so you, we see, you see how I've accentuated um, those two different blues that are in there. Um, at that point, um, again, I'm not going to click the check mark because I don't want to exit masking yet. I want to do another mask. So in this case, what I'm going to do is tap on that box again. I'm going to tap the plus sign. And now um, what I want to do this time is choose um, I'm going to choose a luminance gradient. So luminance has to do with the brightness in the image. So if I come over here, I'm selecting the darker areas of the image. If I come here, I'm getting some of the brighter areas. And you've got these adjusters here um, that let you determine the intensity of that um, area that you're focusing on. Um, I want to have, let me see here. These are a little weird. I, I'm still learning how to adjust some of these um, but I want to I want to affect the bright areas I'm not sure I'm getting there let's see there there now so now if I apply that mask when I make an adjustment it's going to affect those areas so if I go into my light 
I can drop my exposure down a little bit. See how it's affecting those, those areas? Um, I can drop my highlights down. Um, I might even you know, play with my shadows here just to kind of really, now we've started to add some kind of dimensionality to the image. So here's where we started. And there's what we've done just with those a couple of different adjustments. Um, so let's do another one. I'm gonna do another mask. And this time I'm going to choose color range again. And I'm going to come over here and get this blue. It's right here behind the, it's right, right here along the wall. And again, I can back this off to where it's only selecting that blue area there. If I bring it all the way up, it's gonna find some, some blue throughout the image, but I'm gonna back it off to affect that area kind of right there where the circle is. And maybe a little bit more and apply. Now, when I go into color, I can increase the saturation and look, I'm, I can bring that blue up. Now it's affecting the blue everywhere. So even the blue that we masked earlier in the windows above is being affected by this adjustment. Um, and that's starting to look, excuse me, pretty good. Um, I'm gonna go back and do another mask and this time I'll choose color range again, and I'm gonna come down here on this green area. And again, I'm gonna back this off because I wanna get isolate that, uh, that shrub. And I'm going to apply that and go to my color. And again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring my, just saturate that a little bit. Um, the last thing I wanna do with this, I'm, you notice over here, there's some yellow in the image. It's very subtle, but it's right there. And I love the yellow against that blue. So I'm gonna go in here and do another mask and I'll do another color range. And this time I'm gonna kind of zoom in on that a little bit. I'm gonna bring this over here and try and get my marker right there on that yellow. So now I can, again, I can back that off a little bit. So it's gonna narrow the area that's gonna be affected by, you know, in the yellow, but it's gonna pick up yellow over in the, uh, in the in the shrub, uh, as well as the yellow in that um, that flower, that pointed flower there. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that mask. Now I can go back into color again, and I can um, saturate it a little bit. I can even warm it up if I want, just a little. Um, and let's see, there's before and there's after. So again, you can see what we're doing here. The next thing I want to do, and this is a really fun thing um, that you can do, you can actually do vignettes and things using the radial gradient in here. So I'm going to go back and do another gradient or another uh, uh, mask. This time I'm going to choose a radial gradient. And I'm going to take my finger and just drag, and I'm drawing a circle here. And I'm going to position that in the center, roughly the center of the image. Now, right now, if I were to make an adjustment, it would affect the area inside that circle. But what I'm gonna do is come over here to the left panel, tap on the invert button right here. Now I've inverted that, so what, what, what our adjustment will affect is the area outside of the circle. So again, you can change the um, feathering. There's a very harsh line between what we're gonna adjust and, and what's not gonna be adjusted. I don't want that. I want a little bit of a feather there so it's a subtle transition. So now if I come into my light and let's say I drop my exposure, let's just maximize it. You see, look what's happening. We're dropping the exposure way down so that we're getting a darker vignette. I'm gonna bring that up a little bit. To me, the best vignette is one that you barely notice is there. It's almost subliminal to the viewer, but it's enough to bring them into the center of the image. Um, Let's see, um, if I wanted, we could, uh, we could bring those shadows up a little bit. We could play with that and adjust it the way we want. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do, since we've got that outer area, what I'm gonna do now is go in here and I'm going to say, whoops, come on. I'm gonna say uh, uh, duplicate that mask and there it is. So now we've duplicated that mask and Come on, where's my mask? There, we've duplicated it. This time I'm gonna invert it again because now I wanna work on that interior area and I'm gonna come right here and I'm going to brighten that interior area just a little bit. So now if we look at our, 
our image. Come on. There's before and there's after. I mean, that's a really cool transformation in this image. We brought up those colors. Uh, and just like any time you're working with saturation and color, you want to be careful not to overdo it. We may have gone a little too far with this, but I just think that's amazing that we can do this now um, with these tools in, in Lightroom. Uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. A lot of times I will take this into Snapseed now and do some final finishing touches on it. Um, but I mean, I could be done right here um, and, and call it a day. And I'm very happy with that. Again, here's where we started. And here's where we, we ended up. Let's see if we go back to a commit to all those masks. And let's look again here. There's before and there's after. It's not showing us the crop before, but that's okay. But look at that. I mean, that's a huge difference. I think it's really um, a fun thing to do with any of your images where you have color. It's great when you have a sky that you want to soften the, maybe eliminate some noise in a sky and that sort of thing. Um, again, I'll uh, include a link to my um, uh, Lightroom video on how to do the, the whole process, uh, including my workflow for adjusting uh, the image before you get into the, uh, the masking por portion. Um, and uh, I hope you have fun with it. Thanks for watching. And uh, I hope to see you again online soon. You know, click my, uh, you know, give me a like or um, click the little bell so you can get notified when I post uh, videos like this. Um, and I um, appreciate your support and uh, glad to see you here. Until next time, keep on creating.